Okay, so today's lessons is on VCarve Pro, how to use our CNC machine and how to set up a um, file and a drawing and be able to create something on the CNC machine. So uh, the first thing you wanna do, I had the way I had to share this to record this, I was unable to start from the home screen on, on the computer. So what you're wanting to do is if you come down here in the lower left-hand corner, that is what the icon you're going to click on to open this program here, which is VCar Pro. Um, you can also, there's a icon on the desktop that looks very similar to this. It says VCarve on it. And that's what you're going to click on to open the program. VCarve, once again. All right, once we've opened this up, the next thing we're gonna do is come up here and go create new file. Once that pops open, you're going to designate the size of the board that you plan on using or whatever size of project you're going to make. So this, I'm just going to make a standard. This is fairly standard. Once again, you can edit this. Um, if I change this, obviously, you can see how it alters the size of the board in which we're working with. So just based on proportions, I'm going to keep it 18 by 6. The next thing you want to do is state where you want to center this. Okay, some people elect to start from the lower left hand corner. I find it easier to get everything centered on the machine to go ahead and center it from the exact center of the project in which you're working with. So I would recommend starting from this center point. Okay, that's something we have to know when we save the project so that we can get it set up correctly on the CNC machine. So once you have your dimensions in as you need them, you have this where you're going to start your center point on the machine, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. All right, from this point, what I want you to do is go ahead and save your folder or save your file into the folder so that we, if anything happens, we know where it's at. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to this icon right here, the save file icon, you're going to click on that. You're going to go to my computer under documents. You want to go to CNC Shark. So documents, CNC Shark. Under CNC Shark, you'll see Kennedy's class CNC. So you're going to click on that. And this would be the CNC file that you're you're where you're saving it to. Okay, this would be any pictures that we're going to use within our file, which we'll go over that shortly. So we're going to go into CNC file in here. I'm just going to save this as um, first hour cage. So that's what I'm making this design for, something that I needed. All right, so I saved that as first hour cage. Now I have the file saved. Next thing we're going to do is if we want any images on here, you're going to go and search those up. So I went into Google, I just searched for a hand tool, I then right click, save if this is the icon, the image that I want to use, you want to have fairly decent um, resolution on your images if you're going to use them also it works best if you can get like a black and white image so i usually either type in like black and white after it um, or you can type in coloring page whatever that is usually you get the best results by doing it in that fashion okay so i've already saved this right click save i'll go ahead and do it right click um, save image as and then once again where I'm saving this at is in the same location, Kennedy, CNC Shark, Kennedy's class, CNC, and then I'm saving it in this in here, which it already exists right there because I've already went through and saved that. All right, so now that we've saved our image, we're going to come back to VCarve Pro. We want to add that image on here. We're going to go to this bitmap import bitmap or for tracing icon. We're going to click on that. We're going to go and find that picture that we just saved. So once again, we saved it in documents, CNC shark, Kennedy's class, 
CNC picks. So this is the pick that I want right here. I'm gonna open that up. And as you see, it transfers it in there. Um, so once we have this transferred in here, you can move it where you want it to be at. You can resize the image how large you want it. So once you have approximately the size that you would like it to be, the next thing you're going to do is click on this little bird icon, 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 sorry. This is for tracing the bitmap. So I have my image highlighted. I'm gonna click on this little bird. And since I have it in black and white, I'm just gonna click on that. We're gonna do a preview. It's gonna show you what it looks like. And then if that, we like what that looks like, once again, you may get pictures that don't give you the graphics that you like or exactly what you want it to look like. You might not like it. You might have to import another picture. I'm just gonna go with it and hit apply. Okay, after I hit apply, I'm gonna hit close. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the original image and hit delete. And that was the remainder of the tracing that I had. Now, what you may notice, uh, when I come in here and click on this, I might end up clicking on individual aspects of it. So if I want all of that to be grouped together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a window around it so everything's highlighted. And then I can come over here to this icon right here, group selected objects. If I hit that, it groups all of that together. So if I click on one entity or one aspect of that, it's going to select the entire thing, okay? Now that that's selected, if I would want to move this, the easiest way is alignment down here in the corner. You can come here. If I hit this, it's going to center it directly in the middle of the object in which I'm or directly in the middle of my workspace. So if I hit that, obviously you can see it goes directly to the middle. Um, so again, if I were to, to move this, and I just want it centered left or uh, vertically. I could click that, it's gonna move vertically. If I just want it centered left to right, I could hit that and move it over there. So obviously these are all lining it in the direction that I want it to be. So the other thing you can do, which you can't see this, but uh, you can use your up and down, left, right arrow on the computer to, to move this as well. So right now I'm just clicking the left arrow and clicking the up arrow. So however you, if you want to position it not perfectly centered, I think mine looks a little bit better, slightly above center. So I'm going to, I'm going to position it right there. Um, you can also click that right click copy and then right click paste. If you want to duplicate this and then you have multiples of the same thing on the paper. I'm just going to go ahead and do that for fact of what we have here. Okay, so that's one basic thing you can do. Another thing, if you don't, if you want this, but you want it in a separate orientation, what you could do is you could select this. You could come over here to the mirror icon and click mirror. And if I want to mirror it, make the exact same image as it would be appeared in the mirror, I could do it to the right, hit close. Obviously, I could do it up, down, left, right. It's going to do the exact same thing. You should be able to understand that. So I hit close. So if I like that one, I think that'll look better for my little design that I'm going for here. So I'm just going to highlight this one. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All I did was click delete in that situation. I'm going to go ahead and move this over to where I want it. So again, another thing you might not be able to tell, but there's also a ruler up here that can help you with centering and locating these to keep these in proportion and centered where they need to be at. So if I hold this here, so you can see approximately where I'm at. Once again, this is from the, since I went from center, it's working to where uh, it's growing exponentially to the right. And this is the negative side based on the X, Y axis. So right here, I'm about eight and a quarter. Over here, I'm about, need to move it over a little bit more if I want it to be symmetrical. back just a touch. 
All right, so now I have those positioned somewhat correctly on there. Um, next thing we're gonna do is if you want, if you need to orient the screen differently, what you can do is you can uh, roll in and out. So I'm just rolling the mouse here in and out to zoom in and out. Another thing I can do is I can hold down the roller button on the mouse and I can pan wherever I need to go. So if I need to come in, then I need to pan up to make some edits to this, I can do it that way. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some text to this. Pretty simple process. We're just gonna come over here to the text tool. So we're gonna click on this. I find it easier if we're making multiple line text, like I'm gonna do first hour, I'm gonna do it in a single line. Um, but <clears throat> if you were doing multiple lines, um, say like first hour shop underneath of it, it's easier to do first hour, put it in the drawing, and then ship, then do, start a new text and, and create it and put it in there instead of trying to create them at the same time. I'll go with all caps on this. So once you have that, you can hit apply and it's gonna show up how you would like it to. The orientation on this is slightly off. That could be because we're starting from the center. I don't like this text. So what we can do as well is, and I'm gonna show you how you can rotate this as well here momentarily. You can come in here and select different font that you would like. That's pretty basic, I'll go with that. If you like what you have there, you can just hit apply. You can also change your text height here. I'm gonna, change, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, but you can also edit that after the fact. That's way too big. All right, so I'm gonna go with that and show you how you can edit it as well. So I'm gonna apply that text. Now, if I double click on the text, I should be able to rotate this around. Right there. So again, if I like it where it's at, I can also come back here and center this in the middle. If I want it to be larger, I can drag it in and out still, go back and center it however I need it. So I, now I have first hour, as so I'm gonna hang it on the cage in the shop so that uh, they know where to put their, put their supplies. So I have all this to this point. Once again, you can zoom in and out by scrolling in and out. Other things that you can use over here is you have this icon. This is the zoom. So if I use that, I can use the window icon and I can window around it. It'll zoom in. I can use this by scrolling in and out. Once again, you can do the same thing by scrolling in and out at any point. Um, different things you can do over here. Obviously, you can click on this. It'll draw a circle. So whatever diameter you allocate it to be, um, if you click there, it's going to draw that circle to that size. And you can change the diameter. So if I wanted a one-inch circle, you hit apply. It's going to draw it at that point. And then you can move it. You can copy it, whatever you need to do. So that's the circle tool. Um, the rest of these are pretty straightforward. Um, whatever shape it shows that's what you're going to do so if you just need to draw a line you can just click and draw lines however you need to do it um pretty straightforward once again we don't i mean you use those quite a bit when you're editing images and stuff um once again there's a lot more features that we can get more in depth with that you need to you could use um one tool that you will use here is the trim tool so i'll show you how to do that you had some intersecting lines or something that you needed to cut out, you can come in here to the trim, click on trim, and then any, like if I needed to trim this back off to where it bi bisected that line, you just click on that and it would trim it off, okay?
So that is something you will probably use, but there are more advanced features on this that we're not going to get into today. I'm just getting you the basics on how to get this where it is and where it needs to be. So once again, basic tools, this is gonna be the circle icon. This is gonna be the ellipse icon. This is gonna be arc and then the curve tool. So as you can see, as I hold my line over these circle, ellipse, draw a rectangle, draw a polygon, draw a star, draw a line, draw an arc, draw a curve. So you can do all of that on there. There's also a place where you can add text to an arc as well. So I'll go ahead and do that real fast uh, just to show you how you, you would do it. If you wanted to add it to an arc, what you got to have is you have to have a circle in there to start with. I'm going to make this circle a lot larger than what it is currently. Mm -hmm. Even bigger. We'll try it with that. Let's see how it goes. So you have to have the, the text in the circle already created. Then you come in here, select your text. Hold down shift, select your circle, and then you can set it to however you want it to apply to this. Once again, different ways you orient this will control different aspects of it. Um, if you change it to above the curve, on the curve, once again, it can distort it quite a bit. So this takes a little bit of uh, messing with to figure out how you want it to be oriented on there. Once again, that's kind of on a individual basis, depending on what your text is and what you're trying to get out of it. So that would be if you needed text on a curve. So that would be select this wrap text along the curve if you're going to do it that way. Obviously, you'd apply that if you once you got to that point. If this is what we want our drawing to look like for our uh, CNC project, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up over here in the right hand corner where it says tool pass. I'm going to click that and then I'm going to click this little pin right here. After I've clicked that pin, it shows me everything that I have and what different tools in which I can do. The, the easiest one that you'll generally be working in is probably this quick engrave tool. So if we click on this, you have to kind of figure out what you want it to look like. Also here, you can select the different tool that you want. So if you want like a thin line just to outline this, that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna outline both of these items here just a thin line on that basically traces it. You want this engraving tool. So you can select different tools from here. We're gonna just stick with the engraving tool and I'm just gonna outline this one and I'm gonna uh, fill this one. So we have this selected outline. You control your depth, how deep you're going in there. Usually if you're on most of our router signs, we go to 0.5, 0.5 or 0 0.07, that's a good, references to where we're at. We don't want to go too deep into the machine or into the board. So after that, you're going to hit uh, calculate. And it'll calculate the path. What I recommend doing even before hitting calculate or after I've calculated this is to come down here and say save tool path to file. You go into save tool path to file. Once again, right now we're in CNC picks. If it doesn't pull you up into that, once again, how we got to this point was we went to documents, CNC shark, Kennedy's class, and we're gonna save these under CNC files right here. So we're gonna open that up. And I'm gonna save this as, it's gonna be referenced as a different file. This is going to be a tab file. 
So we're going to save that as first hour. So I have that saved. If I close out of this, you can now see there is my file for just this. If I want to cut this out here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into that engrave tool. Let me back out of that so you can see it. Actually cancel that. I went back into this quick engrave. I'm going to go fill instead. So now instead of just outlining, it's going to take out the entire center. Now, depending on how large this is, you might want to change the bit size. That's something you'll probably want to ask myself. Well, what's the best uh, resource for this? Once again, you could come in here. It's probably going to be a fairly small bit, and it's going to be one of these end mill bits. Uh, it would probably most likely be an eighth inch. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Eighth inch. Apply. Okay, so as you can see, it changed the bit type right here. I'm keeping it at the same depth. And at this point, I'm gonna calculate that. And I'm gonna save that tool path as well. It went back to the same thing. So I'm just gonna change, save this as um, first hour letter letters and I'm gonna, I always put what bit I have in there. So I'm gonna go 0.125 as an eighth inch bit. So that way when I select this out of the folder, I know what bit is going to be placed inside the CNC machine to create the right, um, the right cut. So I'm gonna save that. Now I'm back here. If we close out of this, we look, we got, it even shows us we have one tool path created with the, V groove or the engraving bit, and then another one created with a different end mill flat bit here at the bottom. So if you were to save these, you could go here. And if these were made with the same type of tool, you could click output, output all visible tool paths to one file. And that will mean you do not have to load multiple files into the machine once we start cutting this out, which expedites the process a little bit. So if you do have your, um, your design here created and all your tool paths made with the exact same tool path or tool, same bit, I recommend output all visible tool paths to one file. Once again, I cannot do that because I have different types of tools or bits being used, so it would not work. I do have mine saved though. So once you have it done and you wanna kind of see what it looks like, you can go to this preview tool pass. Preview tool pass. You can do preview all tool paths and then Should be able to just select both of them and play that out and it'll actually cut it out for you. Let me let me reset that. So I'm gonna click everything that I want, hit preview selected tool paths, and it's gonna kind of go through and play out. Preview all tool paths, there you go. So it's gonna give you a replication of what it's going to look like once it's cut out into your material. You can come up here and toggle this slightly if you want to look at it more three-dimensional, looking at it to see what it looks like. So again, that's just a different orientation of it, whether or not you can't tell of what it looks like or not. All right. So after we've done all this, we want to make sure we come back over here because this is two different things. We're saving a tap file, which is saving the path in which the bit is running on. And then we also have our design. So we want to make sure we come back over here and save our design. If you can just hit that save icon. Once again, it's just saving it to that CNC file that we have already created. All right, so that's it in a nutshell. The next part will show you uh, setting it up on the CNC machine and actually running this.